cows grazing in an open field. What an idyllic backdrop for this video about the future of food production. But the fact is that this image of food production, of meat production, is entirely unsustainable and it cannot be scaled up. At present, we're seven and a half billion people on the planet. And by mid-century, there'll be over 10 billion people. This means that food production over the next 30 years has to increase by 70%. Yes, seven zero percent if we are to feed the world's growing population. This means that we have got to find completely new ways of farming, completely new ways of producing food and completely new forms of protein. We will be able to increase food production by 70%, but only by a second agricultural revolution. Many farmers in the developed world are already investing heavily in automation and many are adding sensors, activators, satellite imagery, robots and artificial intelligence analysis to create smart farms. These smart farms of tomorrow will seem more like factories than the traditional countryside. Fields and livestock will be tended by robots. Crop production will be governed by data from drones and satellites and that will be analysed by AI to determine seeding times, irrigation cycles and manure or pesticide applications. Low cost, low energy desalination techniques will provide cost effective supplies of fresh water and water recycling systems will also become far more efficient. Cattle and livestock management is also going smart and animals themselves are being fitted with wearable health sensors which monitor their development and quickly alert humans if treatment or other intervention is required. Many underground and vertical smart farms in urban spaces will also be needed to provide the additional biomass required for the growing world population and to provide food in close proximity to consumers. One of the most important things we will be doing in the second agricultural revolution is using CRISPR gene editing to improve plant types and yields. This is not genetically modifying crops in the old way that we've been doing for 30 years by mixing genes from different species together. This is actually going in and editing existing plant genomes. CRISPR gene editing is very precise and it will allow us to enhance the qualities of the crops we need. We will be able to increase resistance to disease and to enhance the methods and ways they grow under different conditions. We're also going to have to use different forms of protein, for example jellyfish and insects, but we'll need to package those and market them carefully to make them appealing. There is likely to be a multiple prong solution to meeting this greatly increased demand for meat and other protein. For example, developing meat substitutes from biomass from plants or growing artificial meat on a large scale. We will also have to educate and nudge populations to eat more balanced diets with fewer meat components. And we must provide food products based on new forms of protein such as insects and jellyfish. Finally, we may have to tax meat and fish produced from unsustainable sources. And there's going to be another revolution in aquaculture, in fish farming. Fish farms are becoming smart in the way that land-based farms are becoming smart. And we're going to use CRISPR gene editing to improve fish genomes to enhance yield and to improve the health of the fish stock. I have no doubt that with all of these changes to agriculture, we are going to be able to feed 10 billion people on the planet. And I suspect that in 30 years time, if we consume fish or meat from unsustainable sources, it will be considered immoral. <laughs>